depths of all the streams are, you can also leave out because Acrobat will figure it out from the actual data it has in hand. So if you take all the stuff you don't need out of a PDF, this is uh, all you actually need to, say, run uh, JavaScript. Um, basically, there's the beginning of the file, there's the end of the file, and uh, it says there's a root object with uh, pages, uh, no pages, rather. Uh, you, have to have, you have to have the pages, but you can have zero pages. Uh, and then you just have an open action that runs the JavaScript. Ta-da! Uh, that's about 75 bytes or something. So uh, you can also, there's a, two optimizations people pointed out to me, is that if you, if you replace that with a null byte, uh, then you can actually shave off two bytes. And then if you also use the uh, on close action, you, it's a few bytes shorter than, than saying on open. Uh, although the thing is that it, um, because it's zero pages, uh, there's a funny thing when you when you open up a when Acrobat opens a document with no pages in it, it, it kind of sits around doing nothing for a while, and then when a, an event actually gets sent to it, like you scroll on the page or something like that, it goes, "Oh, hey, wait a second, there's something wrong with this PDF document," and then it pops up an error. Uh, and uh, you, uh, if you if you do the JavaScript at the uh, on open, it runs the JavaScript before that happens. If you do it on close, that happens before, and if the person just closes the uh, Acrobat, instead of clicking OK, then the on close never gets run, but whatever. So it's, it's only like 20 bytes difference. Uh, anyway, but you can, you can stick the PDF in a lot of places. This is just in a, in a zip file, for example, but you can also stick it like in a GIF comment. Uh, so this is a well-formed GIF. It's also a well-formed PDF as far as Acrobat's concerned. And uh, likewise, uh, th there's a, here's an HTML file. It's also a PDF document, same one. And, uh, and I actually had a ping example, too. If you go to the, uh, I didn't have time to stick it in here, uh, another slide, but they're, they're, if you go to the uh, CCC uh, talks wiki or something like that, there's a, I need to make a, um, a picture for the, uh, the talk. And so I, I did a picture of, of the, this thing, but I, I did it uh, as I put the, uh, all the PDF code in, the, in a text field in, in the ping file. So the, the ping actually, up, if it hasn't been transformed or anything up on the, uh, on the wiki, is also one of these PDF files. So they'll run some JavaScript. <laughs> so let's see what else. Uh, Oh yeah, you can you can find the object more than once. It's not really, it doesn't quite explicitly say what what the behavior is in the in the spec. Although, since you can do like infinite revisions on all of the objects, but just by appending new ones to the end, this is that's pretty much the behavior that it follows. Although, it's, if you don't quite do it right, so I mean, uh, if you don't quite do it the way the spec does, it still works anyway. So uh, if you define object seven, you know, twice, uh, this this one is the one that actually runs. Uh, and even if you point your cross-reference table and say, that's really object seven, uh, it still runs that one. And if you even do an update, say, oh, this, this PDF was updated, and these are the new objects, and this is a new cross-reference table, and you point at that one there, it, it still runs, I mean, if you point that one there, then it still runs that one. So um, you can also, uh, you know, use, reference certain objects more than once, so you can make like a 100-page document with only one page in it. Um, this, this is useful if um, you're writing PDFs by hand and are really lazy and you don't want to write 100 page objects. So you just use the same page over and over again. Um, the other thing in the, uh, in the spec, it's, it, it uh, very explicitly says that, uh, that a PDF, like uh, the page tree, is a, a uh, directed acyclic graph. Although it doesn't say what happens if, if, it is a, if there's a cycle in it or whatever. Um, and uh, I've been kind of, when I read that, I was kind of curious as to how many PDF parsers would uh, go into an infinite loop if you fed them uh, some objects like this. Because uh, each of these is, is every, each other one's parent or child object. And uh, Acrobat will throw an error when it, when it encounters this. But I haven't tested other PDF parsers to see if any of them will go into an infinite loop when you hand them that. Uh, oh, demo time. So um, I was going to do some uh, slides explaining what's actually going on here, but I'll just have to show you. Uh, just a second. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. So I, uh, I did a, a, a three-way combination of I Hold on a second. There we go. Of Hold on a second. Of a, uh, I took I took the Windows Calculator program, and I uh, stuck uh, a PDF inside of it, and also I made it a well from zip file. So all f it's all three file types simultaneously, and uh, I mean it's, you can't really say it's it's this type or it's that type because it it's all of them. 
Here, I can show you how, what the end sites look like. Um, basically, uh, it's, it's the Windows Calculator program, but uh, there's a bit of space after the um, segment uh, table, so I, I, stuck it, I started it in there because it's, it's within the first K. The, the text segment has to start on a, on a 4K page boundary or something like that, so there's, there's a, usually a bunch of empty space for, before the text segment. So I stuck that in there, and then I, I basically said, oh, the text segment, that's a, that's a stream object, so it's, it's perfectly okay <laughs> from uh, PDF. It's not just a bunch of white noise in the middle. And then, uh, oops, and then stream. Uh, and, then this, and then the end of the text segment's there. Uh, so I said, oh, well, that's the end of the stream. And then I put in some more PDF stuff, because there's a bit of space before the next pa uh, page, and this is the data segment. And so I said, oh, yeah, the data segment, that's another stream, too. And then, uh, and then down at the end, um, and they say, oh, okay, that's, that's it for that stream. That's, that's the end of the resource segment. Uh, and then there's the rest of the PDF. And then uh, this is a zip file, and that's the beginning of the zip file there. Because uh, um, exe, uh, Windows looks at the beginning of the file to figure out if a file's in exe. Zip looks at the end of the file to figure out if a file's a zip. And then PDF looks somewhere in the middle, kind of near the beginning. And uh, so, and the, the thing is that, um, in the, in the zip file is basically the, the central directory structure is basically just a, a thing that says uh, you know file name you know t size CRC whatever and offset to the entry in the file and normally it starts at zero but if you if you take your zip file and you, you stick like a couple kilobytes of data in front of it uh, you can pretty much just add the delta between that and zero to the uh, the two offsets in the in the zip headers and then and then unzip sees it perfectly fine. Um, you can put all kinds of data in the middle of a zip that way. Uh, anyway, so but there's the uh, cross reference table. It's in the comment on the on it. So the, the end of end of file tag really does appear at the end of a file this time. All that's unnecessary. But um, so if you uh, unzip this, uh, see no error is detected in the compressed data. And uh, I was actually there's a um, I believe it's possible since since uh, since PDF uses the deflate algorithm, which is the same thing that zip uses, and zip entries have a comment at the end of the entry just before the compressed data, uh, and you can put whatever you want after the compressed data in a zip file. I'm pretty certain it should be possible to write a PDF file in which all of the compressed objects in the PDF are also compressed objects in a zip file. So when you unzip the zip file, you extract all of the objects from the, from the PDF, because all you need to do is put, uh, like, begin stream, uh, in the zip file comment for each of the zip files, and uh, then an end stream at the end, which zip will ignore, and then uh, you know bump up the appropriate offset for the next zip header. And that should work. I was going to write one of those last night, but I, I didn't quite have time. So uh, if you uh, so anyway, that's so this is the file. Uh, it's a zip file, and once I figure out where my mouse pointer is, uh, so I dropped it on onto uh, here this Windows box. And you see it's, oops, there it is. It's, uh, it's the Windows Calculate program, because that's what I started off with. And so you run it, and it still works perfectly fine as an exe. <laughs> and then if you uh, open it up in, in Acrobat, uh, it, it opens it as a PDF and runs a JavaScript inside. <laughs> So, um, and I also believe it uh, should be possible to also put a, a stuff a RAR file in the middle of that too, because RAR doesn't care where it starts either. <coughs> but uh, I know one of the the, uh, the things on my to-do list. Uh, oh, and also as far as quines go, uh, I believe a PDF quine would look something like this, but I haven't. Uh, this doesn't work. Uh, I was working on it just before I got up on stage. Uh, and I'm pretty sure if I muck with this for like a few more minutes, I can probably get it to work. But, but basically, it, uh, you know, it's an object, and it says, "Oh, the rest, the, everything down to there is, you know, an object." And, and this, you know, takes the contents of that object, prints them back out with with PDF before and after in the stream. And I think those are optional. I can probably co co chop those off. But anyway, so uh, back to my slides. And uh, all right, so any questions so far? You. Yeah, use the microphone. If you're, if you're, gonna, if you're going to uh, ask questions, please uh, use the uh, microphones um, that uh, are available. 
this. It's very interesting to see what Acrobat does, but have you tested other readers as uh, KPDF or no. EPDF? Okay. Uh, the question is, have I tested all readers? And no. Uh, actually, I've only looked at Acrobat for the most part. And a, a little bit at, at uh, OS X Preview, but just because it's, I'm um, testing this on a Mac. Uh, oh, and, and you had a question. Or no, you don't. Okay. So uh, I did a couple of tests a few months ago. Um, and before I start, does, can anybody guess what conclusion I'm about to draw from all this. <laughs> so I took a, uh, whoops. Uh, so I took a, took a two-year-old exploit out of Metasploit, um, cleaned it up so it wasn't even obfuscated. And, uh, and everyone should detect this. It's, it's like ancient and, and easy to see and stuff like that. Uh, I uploaded a bunch of, uh, I uploaded to, to VirusTotal. And uh, VirusTotal, blah, 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 it's, it's, a lot of people, AV companies complain because it's not doing like the memory runtime analysis, it's only doing static analysis and blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't really matter in this case because it's PDF. So um, anyway, this is, this is the, uh, the code I stuck into, the, uh, into a regular PDF. Um, it, uh, when you, uh, I, back in May, I uploaded it, and only nine out of 41 uh, uh, antivirus programs detected anything, and most of them were generic uh, signatures. You can see it's the heuristic stuff, gen, 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 gen. Uh, I, this morning, I uploaded the file again, and, and it, now it does like eight, what was it, 18 out of 43, and I didn't, I ran out of space here, but there's a few more after this. And so it's gotten a bit better. Um, like I said, uh, I took out the, uh, the percent sign hex stuff because most of the time that's probably what they're looking for. And, and when you do that, actually, the, uh, oh, and the, uh, this, this example doesn't work, obviously. Uh, if you do that, it drops down to two, uh, or at least it did back in May. It's, uh, uh, there's now about 14 out of 43 that will detect it as of this morning. Uh, and I, I didn't cut and paste the whole thing on here, too. It's, it's, nobody's going to read that. It's tedious. I'll just go look it up if you like, care. Um, so I, I stripped down everything except uh, down to just the uh, actual um, statement that triggers the, the vulnerability itself. Uh, nobody detected it back in May. And, uh, but today, as of this morning, uh, AVG apparently will detect it as exploit C or something. I don't know, it might just be because, be because they saw my talk a few months ago. Um, I've, been, I've been passing these samples around to various researchers, so, uh, so I'm not surprised. Uh, was anybody surprised? Yeah, that's what I thought. And uh, most, yeah, generally most of the, the actual in the wild live exploits I see are uh, generally detected by almost nothing these days. Although I, my company will detect all this stuff. And uh, ask me later if you want info on that. Because um, we, we use Adobe Acrobat for parsing PDF files. So, um, what was this? Oh, so I did the zip file trip, trick. And uh, just storing it, uh, you, you end up getting about the same results as before. Uh, if, you, uh, if you do this thing, I mean, this is what it was back in May. If you do it now, it's the other 18, like the other one, too. Uh, if you do the, the um, file name trick, uh, so, the, so the PDF header disappears when you unzip the zip file because the antivirus program says, oh, this is a zip file, I'll unzip it and scan the contents. Oh, but this isn't, what is this file type? It doesn't have a PDF header at the beginning, so it's not a PDF. And, uh, and so it, it, that drops it down to about five, or at least back in May. It's, uh, whoops, it's, what was it? It was like 10 now as of this morning. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't bother writing that on the list here either. Um, if you do the, uh, oh, sorry, if you do this trick, oh, and if you do that, the trick where the PDF disappears, and also you compress the, uh, the JavaScript, then uh, it drops down to two, but, uh, or at least back in May. But something to keep in mind, though, is, is if you go and look up this Google for this signature, you see a lot of people complaining uh, that it detects, like, Google Mail as being malicious. It's kind of a, it's their, their heuristic thing that, that kind of false positives on everything. Um, I don't know much about the surface one. Anyway, uh, today it's like six, so. Uh, whoops. Uh, so, uh, so I only spent like an hour or two on this, and uh, if anyone else wants to actually do this experiment like more formally, go ahead.